might say if the world can party, if the world can party, the church can celebrate. We got it. We, we got a real, that's what causes the anointing to linger. I mean, when we all do it. Tonight, I am going to say tonight, tomorrow night, Sunday, all day, no hitchhikers. Tell your neighbor you're going to get busted for hitchhiking. Tell them right now, come on. That means, that means you leave them do all the clapping, all the shouting, and you just stand there and go, amen, 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 amen. We want to lift the roof in this place. We, This is the Christian manifesto. This is the weekend. This is the day. He talked about it. He talked about it. He preached about it. He talked about it. And then he went and did it. Come on, say, my talk has got to turn into action. And that's what this week is all about. Come on, let's do it, David, and nothing. You guys have to help me sing this. Anybody remember this? Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything? backstage it seems like we never left I mean that's that's pretty powerful you know and, and the growth here the anointing that's been just visiting your services I don't know if there's anybody left to get healed maybe there's not anybody left to get healed I don't know make a covenant this weekend best as you can put it on the calendar put up give your faith a window to work in you'll find that it'll be much more effective you know setting a point of contact if God doesn't do it in that point of contact then you just kind of recalibrate but don't just be out there aimlessly coming to meetings and well maybe something will happen man he's waiting for you to declare something to happen yeah. 
you know, and maybe this is the weekend that you get off of 30% healed. You've been sitting on better for a long time. And better's gotten you by for the past three or four years. My back is better. My eyes are so much better. Why, I don't have to get up as many times in the night. What's better than not as many times? You don't get up at all. You know, don't let good become the enemy of better and better the enemy of best. Don't let some become the enemy of all. Come on, let's put our hands up all over the place tonight. Come on, let's raise the bar. I believe the Holy Spirit is here in an unlimited version, unlimited measure for amazing things to happen, amazing miracles to take place, healings, the, the, the breaking of addictions. I mean, the, 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 the groundswell of hope on the inside of you for healing in relationships, for healing in your memories. I believe, I believe this weekend is a resurrection weekend. I really, really do. Come on, say, Jesus went into the tomb one way. And he came out another way. I'm coming to church this weekend. And I'm leaving another way. My grave clothes are coming off. Come on, hands up. Say, Holy Spirit, this week, show me how to surrender at a much higher level. Show me how to really mean it and trust in your grace to do it. I will flow. I will cooperate. And I will get in on this. I will make that exchange. And I will get the better end of the deal. Come on, say in the name of Jesus. Give him a mighty praise, come on. Amazing. Put your hands just up in the air just for a moment. I, I want you to really locate as much as you can. What would really be amazing? What would be amazing for you tonight to happen? And what is it that you're, you know, you're waiting for God to work on or you're working, your, your faith is working on it, but what could really send you out of here and contact every one of your Facebook friends and say, man, you got to get here. You ain't can believe what happened to me. Whether it's a healing or a prophetic word or a deliverance, or maybe none of those. Maybe it's just presence, his mighty presence that just comes on you. And when you walk out of here, it won't lift. You're covering up with covers tonight, but all his presence is all over you. For Say it's on you for a day, two days, three days. I believe God's doing some amazing, unique things in the earth today. So think about what that is that would really help you share excitement with others. What is it tonight that, that you're believing for? I mean, what's that one thing? What's that one thing that could create a, a domino effect? Boy, if I had this, if this would happen, if somebody, if this person here would get saved, if I could just get rid of this double vision, this cancer, if I could just lose 15 pounds, come on, somebody help me tonight. You might disappear if you lose 15 pounds. Maybe three, somebody say three. Come on, put your hands up and say, Holy Ghost, give me a target tonight to aim at so that I can aim at something this weekend. I want to measure my progress. Your presence, your power makes a marked difference every time I'm in it. And tonight, I want to raise the bar and move further and raise higher than ever before. Not by might and not by power but by the Holy Spirit. Now give him a mighty, mighty shout. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Let's do this.
come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit I need you come Holy Spirit come Holy Sweet Spirit, Spirit I, I pray come in thy strength come, come in your strength your power come in thy Take it up, David. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I need you. Come, sweet Spirit. I dozen of you right here come right down here I, I, I just thought of it as we were doing that I hadn't really thought about this do we have a microphone that I can have down here or you're gonna do it for me good please come if you were here, some so many raised their hands where are you come just come I want to give me about a six or seven yes yeah, six or seven yeah you don't have to raise your hand just come just come, if God touched you in our last crusade here at the Millennial Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma, soon to be globally recognized. You didn't hear that, that's all right, that's all right. That's all right. You'll get warmed up by Sunday, that's all right. Tell me what happened, it was, this was the last time. Last time, uh -huh. I came in on a cane on a cane. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, because my knee, I couldn't, I had a arthritis flare up, I guess, and I couldn't hardly move, and... Listen, now these stories, they're, they're, they're only worth your ability to really pay attention, because even though you may think this isn't that big of a deal, 
you know, arthritis and pain, well, we all have pain. And you may be here tonight and think, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, it, it is a big deal. It's a billion dollar business called pain relief. And I, I, I don't know where she's going with this, but you're telling me it was bad? It was bad, yeah. I was hauling a cane around and um, I came up and actually I came up for something else. Yeah. And you laid hands on me. Uh -huh. And when I got up, I was dancing. And I'm still dancing. What makes her a dangerous woman? Because <laughs> she's dangerous. Why? Because she's got a story. She's got a story that relates to everybody out there and everybody in here. And at any moment, she's like nitro. She can just go off. She could be right in the middle of a Starbucks sippy cup, you know, and... And all of a sudden, man, somebody just, and she says, let me tell you what happened to me. That's what God wants to do is inundate Tulsa, Oklahoma, and beyond. Come on. Come on, say Tulsa and beyond. With story after story after story after story of God's faithfulness to you. I once was blind and now I see. See, the trouble with a lot of us that have been in this and in church like this, we get used to this. And what you get used to becomes invisible. You just, you know, that's just, so it takes somebody coming to your house to comment on that vase that's over there. Oh, yeah, that vase. Yeah, yeah, we've had that for about, honey, when did we get that vase? I don't know. Yeah, we've had that vase. But for a visitor, man, look at that vase. Don't you have a treasure in you? Everybody in here has a treasure. And the thing about the treasure, listen to me, the, the thing the devil, he's not so much afraid of your treasure, he's afraid of your accumulation of treasure. Everyone say accumulation. That means story after story after story after story. You want a healing testimony? I got one. You want a financial? I got one of those too. You want a marriage one? Oh, I got a word, uh, one of those really big time, yeah. Couldn't have a baby's testimony? Yeah, I have that one as well. I saw an angel. Yeah, I had just recently had that one. God wants to fill your room with trophies. Fill your room with trophies. But you got to brag about them. David said, I'll boast all day long about the things that God has done. We've got to really begin to show God that we'll, we'll be faithful with telling the story. And if you don't have a story, tell other people's stories. I mean, how many of the students at Raymond have told Brother Hagen stories for years? Right? They didn't have a story, so they said, let me tell you what happened to Brother Hagen. Or, let me tell you what happened to Brother Roberts. And that's what you do, because that's people that, people that know people. I mean, Bible characters work, but sometimes you're gonna move into some locals, you know? I mean, this city has had a few pretty big, powerful people in it. Come on, say amen. And I think there's one emerging right here. That's what I'm getting the feel for. Come on, I do, come on. But it needs you, it needs everything about you. It needs your, your presence, obviously. It needs your praise, it needs your support, but it needs your story. That waitress down there needs to know something that happened to you right here. Yes. You know, that guy down here at the, at the machine shop or the automobile place, he needs to know that he notices you don't limp anymore. He notices that your arm is straight. It doesn't have to be major. I mean, not everything's major, but don't have to be, you know, cancer or, you know, multiple sclerosis. We always think it's those big ones. And they, they're, it's all of it. We are living proof of who Jesus is and what he's doing here in the middle of this assembly. I mean, you can get flyers, you can do e uh, Facebook and you can do emails, that's all. Everybody does that. But stories, your story, 
you once were spiritually dead and now you just enjoy going to church? Amen. It's called resurrection, people. Yes. Yes. Come on, see, it's called resurrection. Yes. Your story, those people that you're around, that if you're still ashamed of this, then that's where you need to get the victory. If you're not comfortable telling your story, because you're thinking it might ruin a friendship or jeopardize your place at work, there's a way to do it. It doesn't have to be on office hours. And when you're out there at the lunch table, maybe on lunch or after work, so if you don't want to jeopardize that, but this, this explosive information that's on the inside of you is trying to get out. Jesus did not come in to you be, to become a prisoner in your heart. I got the Lord, he's right here. And he says, I know, and I can't get out. I can't get out. He didn't move into you and me to be stuck there. The deal was, I want to move in you, and I want to move through you. And that means until you know the scriptures, maybe more, maybe you aren't confident like that in scriptures, but you got a story. All I know is what he did for me. I'm not on depressants any longer. You know, I, I, you know, I really enjoy getting up and getting back into my, some of my social habits. I, I enjoy exercising again. I didn't, I, that all shut down. When I went through that divorce, it just shut down. When I lost my son to an accident, I just shut down. And now I'm coming back. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. What happened here? What happened here? Well, a year ago, you were here, and my husband had just died, and we were inseparable. And I was so broken, I couldn't talk. And Pastor Karen had to talk for me. Well, she talked for you up here. Because I couldn't tell you, you what was wrong. Because of your husband. Oh, yes. How many years were you married? Forty. Forty years. And we were inseparable. Inseparable. My heart was broken, and I said to him, you came to heal the brokenhearted. I'm holding you to it. My soul was crushed. I said to him, you said you'd restore my soul. Life abundantly was gone. And I said to him, you said you'd give me life and give me life more abundantly. And he has done the impossible. He has restored my life. <laughs> Shout out loud, I will recover. Say it. I will recover. I'm in recovery. That, I mean, that's precious. He's precious. He's everything he said he would be. He's full of loving kindness. He's full of mercy. And he has never, ever not been faithful to me. And he's done it one more time. And I praise him, and I couldn't not tell you. I believe he's launching you into an inner healing ministry. Inner healing ministry. Well, somebody give God a shout. Come on, beautiful. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Who else is up here? Over here. Yes, ma'am. This is a cane, right? What ha oh. Crutch. What happened? Well, in September... I came mm -hmm. and God healed me of my back pain. I had five fractured discs. Oh, Remember that? How many? I don't know, five. And the pain was just getting so bad. And I was about shut down. You know, you talk about shut down. And um, I came. God miraculously healed me. I walked. Remember when I walked up that ramp? I do now. And back down that ramp. And I couldn't believe it. I had no pain. No, but let me tell you what happened. But let me tell you what happened. Okay. Two months later. Two months later. I fell in the weirdest, weirdest way. And I broke five bones <gasps> in, in this leg. Okay. And it set me back again. Oh. I'm here tonight because I, I need healing. God. So you got one? I got one and I know he can do it again. Yeah. 
I know what, he can do it again. Why the crutch? Is it because of that? Because I can't walk without it. I first had a, a wheelchair, then I went to a um, walker, and now I'm on a crutch. I think you're trying to sneak into the healing line. That's what I, I, I am. I am. I sure am. <laughs> I am believing I for a miracle. I think she's trying to sneak in here ahead of all of you. I'm believing for a miracle tonight. Yes. I wouldn't have missed this for anything. So, and where are you from? Can I ask you where you're from? Jinx, Tulsa. Tulsa. Tulsa, Oklahoma. And your church is here? No, my, no. I, I, I go to First Baptist in Tulsa, downtown Baptist. Tulsa. Baptist. Though. How did she get in here? Today? Billy. <laughs> Billy, I'll tell you what, though. You know, I was raised a Nazarene. Oh. Does that change anything? It just seems like you're progressing. You're just moving down the road. And then you join this radical group here. I've got a dear friend here in this church. Yes. Yes. And she invited me and told I'm me so glad. this is my second miracle. Oh my. You. Come on, give her a big God bless you. But see, not only does she love the Lord, but she's smart. See, a lot of believers, they, they, they have wisdom, but they're sometimes they're just, they don't come back to the place where they got touched. Because they think I didn't get it at all. I only got some and I'll look silly going back. Yet we go to chiropractors endlessly. Come on, we go to other places endlessly. And we walk and we say, here I am again. But we won't go back to the church. What is that? Especially where you got some help. One guy said, yeah, well, I tried that. I was in one of your meetings, I tried that, and I didn't get all that I wanted. I said, whoa, 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 what, you got some, though. Well, I, yeah, I'm seeing better, but I, uh, you're seeing better. Sir, if I remember, you were blind. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you see me? Yeah, I mean, not clear, but you can see me. Why wouldn't you come back? What is that? Say, you got to be careful that you know that you're not as saved as you think you are. I mean, when you're saved, you're, you're pulled to, the, to be with the, the family. And you're pulled to be where the presence is. That's part of what makes you stronger. It's part of getting equipped. See, what you can't do for yourself, you come and get it done for you. That's why you eat out. You don't want to cook. That's why you drive your car through the car wash. Because you don't want to wash your car, so you just sit in there and let it all happen. Come on, somebody. This is your car wash right here. Come on, this is your car wash. And there'll be a day whenever you realize the car wash, you know, and there's some things you need to add to it. You're gonna, it's gonna give you the motivation you have to get involved, to get engaged with the Holy Spirit at a higher level. So don't be frustrated where you are, but just continue to visit, you continue to come and be in the presence. It's amazing what may happen to you accidentally on purpose. I think that's an amazing story right here. I do. Where are you hurting right now? I hurt all down my front leg. Is it hurting right this moment? Yes. You is. sure? Yes. Check yes, it. I'm sure. <laughs> well, check it. Check it. Yeah. It's got some plates here and some titanium here. Oh, she had surgery. Oh, yeah. Doctor didn't know even what to do about it. He, he said, I'm going to have to think about this one. I'm... And next day he came and said, I got it figured out. He oh. did surgery. So, what can I say? Only, only God. I, I, I gotta have God's healing. Give this Baptist a big God bless you. Come on. <laughs> Let her go. The power's on her. Let her go. Somebody give God a shout.
Nothing is impossible on, when you put your trust in God. Nothing, nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His word. Hearken, hearken to the voice of God to me. Is there anything too hard for me? So put your trust. I'm walking a lot better than I was when I came in, that's for sure. How's it feel? Yeah. It still hurts in this A little part. sore. Yeah, little it's sore. very sore. But it's been sore. I mean, the swelling hasn't even gone all the way down. And it's been six months. Well, you know what? That, the, the anointing, when you get prayed for and you fall, if, if you should, and you get up and you go back to your seat, maybe, you're, maybe you think it's over. It's working. That anointing's down in there moving with muscles and sinew and bones and soft tissue. And... I think she's a Bapticostal. That's what I think. To see, to see that is worth it all. And that's what happens when people hear your story. Don't be ashamed. Stop being ashamed. He took shame to the cross. This weekend, take your shame to the cross. Say, I'm done being ashamed. If wicked people can get on the news and on TV and do wicked things and brag about wicked and all that stuff. We we have a story to tell. Each in our own way. This is huh? This is amazing. Now what are you gonna do? I can, I want to check in with you. Where are you sitting? Where are you sitting? I'm sitting right back there. Are you with anybody? Is anybody with you? The girl in the team. Jacket. We have a couple seats down front here because I want to check with you through the night. I want to see how the, this lake progresses through the night. I'm a believer that this is going to be completely no pain, no soreness. That's what I've been professing. Yeah. You just walked up there too much and you couldn't do that at all. No, I couldn't. No, I couldn't. Where's my cane? Or my... Crutch. My Crutch. Oh, there. Okay. <laughs> I want you to sit in one of these seats close to me here, and I want you to just move that leg. Look at that. That's just so much better. That's exciting, huh? Judy. Judy. So just move that leg around. Before the evening is over, 
I'm, I'll be back to check on you as I want the people to see. We hide nothing. We hide nothing. I mean, that's just the way you do this. It's either real or I don't want it. And we see too many real things. But we just had a, a guy, Paul, this a week ago, a week ago tomorrow morning, Saturday morning a week ago in our Miami service, completely paralyzed. It's on, I think they're putting it on either YouTube or on, uh, they're putting it on some, I think it might be on YouTube now, I'm not sure. His name's Franklin. Came in a wheelchair. He had been diagnosed with uh, lung cancer. When they went in, they found out there's no lung cancer, but there was cancer somewhere. And they couldn't find it. When in the midst of them exploring, they severed so many nerves and he went completely paralyzed. He was bedridden for five to six months. Couldn't get out of bed. And this Saturday morning, we were back, we were there for three services. Saturday morning, he come, they come wheeling him in. He's a pretty big guy, I don't know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, something like that. And they wheeled him up and I said, how are you doing today, sir? And he said, well, uh, I'd like to be better. I said, what's going on here? Because everybody in a wheelchair isn't paralyzed. Just because you see an empty chair don't mean they couldn't walk. So I like to clarify that because to me it makes a difference. Keep, keep the honesty of the, of the miracle. Maybe more people would believe in them. And I said, so sir, what's the matter here? And he said, I'm paralyzed. I said, oh. I said, tell me about it. He said, I'm paralyzed from the waist down. Can't walk, can't stand, can't do anything. And it happened at the doctor at the hospital. And I don't know what to do and where to go. And I don't go to this church. I'm a visitor. He was a visitor at that church. He said, and I heard about this meeting. So he thought I'd come and check it out. I said, well, how about you walk today? How about this? Let's walk today. See, I had to process the word paralyzed and say, ah, not today. Not today. If your processor is broke, then you can't challenge anything. How each of us process everything determines what we eventually will hold on to. I mean, you gotta, for, for me to process that, that he's gonna stay that way, it has to get by my faith, Holy Ghost, all the scriptures, all that I know, and you gotta make it difficult for the things you're hearing to take you over. Or else you'll hear it all the time and you'll stand on scripture, but you won't see anything happen. It's how you process the bad information. These, these monsters that live in the sea, the, the crustaceans, the, the lobsters and the crabs that feed off of the bottom. They feed off of dead things and poisonous things. Yet we go pay pre, supreme price for them in the restaurant. Why? Because God made them so that when that poison goes through them, they process the poison and they turn it into protein. Come on, somebody help me here. They're made that way. And see, we, we have a converter in here. In case you don't know, you have a converter in here. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. So when that information hits you, that's one thing, but it gets down into that converter. And that Holy Ghost says, ah, not today. Not, not another year of this. Ah, we're going to abbreviate those treatments. We're going to stop that dialysis in three weeks. And we're going to take away those glasses tonight. Those hearing aids, has, it's long overdue. You've got you to gotta begin to process things, not just by what was said years ago. Get an updated version of what God's saying to you in this hour. Because in this hour is the, is the greatest visitation we've ever seen. We've been locked up for a couple years and we're a hungry, hibernated believer. Come on, somebody. Come on, we're coming out hungry. So I said to them, I said to him, I said, so sir, what do we, what do we want to do? He said, well, if you say I'm going to walk. I said, well, I, I'm challenging you. He said, so what do you want me to do? I said, I want you to get up out of that chair. And the cameras were rolling. And I didn't give a hoot. If I care about me, then I, I, I got to get out of this. I don't need to be in this. If I'm out here and I can't get, get faith to you or a promise to you, but I'm worried about me and how, what my reputation is. How stupid is that? 
I said, that's pretty stupid. I mean, this isn't, this isn't about staying, becoming famous or it's about becoming real. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's time for you to get real. Come on, tell them. So I said, okay, I said, here we go. I'm going to count to three, sir. Frank, his name is Franklin. I said, come on, Franklin, I'm going to count to three. He said, but I'm paralyzed. I said, I heard you. I said, I heard you, but I'm not processing that. I, 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 that, that went through me. It hit me. I heard you. But when the God here, something in here says, uh, not for long. <laughs> uh, by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. You see, you'll, you'll process what you're feeding yourself with. So if you're feeding yourself with the wrong information, you process wrong. But if you read about faith and miracles and you, pro and you process differently, nothing, why do we sing this song? Nothing is impossible. And put your trust in God alone and stand upon his word, nothing. So before you know it, I said, do you want me to help you? He said, well, he said, you're gonna help. I said, I'll help you, but I, you're too big for me to carry, so I'm gonna help you and then you're gonna be on your own. He said, well, well, preacher, I, preacher, I'm paralyzed. He kept saying it. I said, well, I, I heard you. I heard you, but I'm saying, let's go. See, it's like Jesus. He was down there tuning everybody out. Writing in the dirt. How do you tune people out? By tuning in. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. How do you tune out? And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight, maybe, if we have time here, but... I grabbed him by the hand, he, and he said, I, but I can't. I said, he's, I'll fall. I said, well, if you do, you fall in faith. I'd rather fall in faith than sit in doubt. Yes. Boom, he gets out, and all of a sudden, he's standing up, his legs are shaking. He said, how, how, how's this happen? I'm not, I can't do this. I said, I know, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> see, see, miracles are a shock. I said, what do you want to do? I said, come on, let's walk. He said, but I can't walk. I said, I know, but come on, let's go. Anyhow, you got to really, what the Bible says, Abraham, consider not. What you consider, you feed. When you consider your brokenness and what that man did to you, when you consider what happened when you were 16, you're feeding it. So Abraham is 100 years old, his wife's 90. He's been given a prophecy to have a baby. He has no sperm and she has no eggs. Talk about a challenge. <laughs> Come on, say these words because they make me become more real. No sperm, no, sperm. no, eggs. no eggs. You're gonna have a baby. Have a baby. <laughs> wait, no, wait a minute. So what's the Bible say? He considered not his own body now dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. Don't focus on his body or the, or the womb. Focus on he didn't give it any consideration. Yes. Yes. Wow. But, I, but Billy Burke, Pastor, we have to consider it. I'm, I'm just quoting the Bible to you. Consideration is feeding something. Well, maybe bring that into balance. I don't know how to balance that verse. We consider wrong things too much. We dissect, we analyze them. And I mean, there's a promise for you tonight. You know, that, that brace can come off. Anyhow, I, we started to walk across the front of this church. Well, David, you were there. David... Yes, David was there. And he was walking across the front of the church. And he looked a little stiff. He'd been paralyzed for a while and in bed ridden for six months. Pretty soon, he grabbed a hold of the wheelchair that he was in. He said, man, I'm going home. <laughs> and he pushed the wheelchair right out the front door of the church. <laughs> now... But you have to allow yourself to be challenged without being offended. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. 
See, you don't, you can't comfort faith. Jesus never comforted faith. No. Rise, pick up your bed. Well, don't you think if I could do that, I would do that? He, he would tell people to do things that were impossible, but it wasn't until they began to cooperate yep, yep, yep. that grace stepped in. Come on, say grace, grace. follows a decision. You decide grace shows up. The empowerment of heaven shows up. Instead of you just writing it off, well, no, I've had these glasses for 30 years and it, it's not the worst thing that could happen. No, it's not. But wouldn't it be kind of neat, kind of cool to tell your grandchildren, look, Pap Pap don't need these no more. <laughs> See, quit thinking about you. Think about what your story could do. So all of a sudden, he don't need me no more, pushes that wheelchair right out the door, and I'm thinking, to my, and this is me, and I'm, I'm being used in the middle of this miracle, and I, and I have to say continually to myself, because, because I'm just so impressed with God. And I'm thinking, Am I, did I just see this? Because it says right on, if you see it on the internet, it just says, I'm paralyzed. He says, and we have later, we've questioned him, we've called him, and we've, and we've documented this. So paralyzed, how, do you, how does that compute? You don't see too many paralyzed people wheel in and walk out. I mean, it really disturbed me. I'm thinking, Lord, now wait a minute, you know. He said, you gonna complain about that miracle? No. Don't you let me know ahead of time when you're gonna do that? No, I don't need to notify you when I'm gonna do it. Let, let Holy Spirit challenge you. And think about anything's possible. I mean, I, I love coming here because I know you're used to hearing this. I know your pastor and his wife do a great job. And we've seen many miracles here at the Millennial Church, by the way. Some wonderful miracles, right? But I believe we're on the cusp of an invasion. I believe we're on... I do, I do. How are we doing? How are we doing? You, you moving it? Better? It's all better already? As much as you can move it in the, in the chair because of the seat. Well, don't let that hold you back. I mean, Judy, come on, Judy in disguise. Come on, just. It's already straightened up. It's straightened up to the leg is straightened up. It's straightened up. They, they've been working. They've been working on this. They leg. what? They've been working on this leg to straighten up and almost dismissed me from therapy because they couldn't get it to move. They couldn't get it to move. And it's moving right now. Yes, Somebody better give God a shot. Come on. Come on. Yeah. She's a miracle in motion. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Do we have anybody else up here with a story? Yes, sir. What happened to you? Prostate. My prostate was high. Your prostate? High. Yeah, it was your PS, high. Your PSA numbers? Yeah. How high? Can you tell me the numbers, what they were? Oh, it was off the chain. <laughs> it was what? It was off the chain. The late, my doctor told me I, I had really cancer. And I tell you, hey, uh, don't speak that over me. I said, a guy who I believe, he could do all things. So the doctor just, actually said that to you, and you told him, don't say that yeah, to me. I told him, yeah, I told him, don't speak that yet. Yeah, you know what I mean? I said, you can't speak that when you don't know what you think you know. Though. You don't know who I know. The guy who I know, he could do all things, you know. But for him, you know, he can't fail me, you know. So, 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 so. You, you, you got touched here, right? Yes. And then yes, did sir. you go after that to the doctor? Yes. And did they test you after that? Yeah, they, and? Told, me, they told me it was good. Hallelujah! 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 Wow. Have you told anybody? Because you had prostate uh, cancer, they told you, and then you don't. Yeah. You do now, you don't. That what they told me, she said it was that high. The, no, the she, PSA numbers were high. Very high that right. I need to go see uh, you know, an oncologist. Yeah, yeah. And when I went. And I, I told her, I said, well, I'll go see him, though. I'm not going to so leave what they say. So you held your ground. You know, I, yes, yes, sir. And uh, when I went there, he said, well, you have a little bit. 
And me and my wife was sitting on the side. And I told my wife, I looked over at my wife, he said, Look, man. He said, it'll, it'll work, you know, another year. You could, you could go another year, a couple of months, you know, as soon as possible. I said, Wait, hold on. I'm going to see my God, my daddy. I'm going to have a talk with my daddy. My wife looked at me and she said, come on, let's go. And we left on out there and never went back no more. <laughs> I didn't understand him, but I believe him. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost on that man. Come on, somebody give God a shot. Oh. That, you know, that is so powerful because when those, you're a man, that, those numbers go up there. I mean, that, that cancer counts is pretty for sure. And then to go to a meeting, not surgery, not medication, to a meeting, to walk in one way and walk out another way. There's an atmosphere here that's just growing. I felt it when I walked in tonight. Don't get used to this. Because visitors are on the way. And they'll push the regulars right out of the way. They're coming in with because they're dissatisfied with wherever they're coming from. So they're liable to take your seat, your miracle, you know, and who knows what else. Maintain value. Thank you, Lord, for the, my pastors. Thank you for this church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What happened, ma'am? What happened? He touched me through you at the Marriott. Oh, the it's Marriott. A, yeah, it's been a few years. Yeah, what happened? And, well, it's just been progressively getting better and getting what, better. What was your condition better? at the Marriott? Spinal cerebellar ataxia caused from an adverse reaction to the anthrax shot. <gasps> so you had a reaction to an anthrax shot? In the military. Yeah. In the military. But now, God gave me a divine connection with the contractor to my house. He owns a hyperbaric chamber. Oh. So, I almost didn't go because... You know, you got to give right. all the glory to God. Right. But God uses people. Yes, he does. And so I'm getting more oxygen. Beautiful. To all parts of my body. My speech is clear. I'm bending my knees without thinking about it. When I walk. And I'm with other veterans. It's amazing. Hyperbaric chambers, a lot of your professional people have them. Your athletes have them. You know, but listen to me. God uses so many things. He said, I'm the door. Go through me. I'll connect you to a resource. Come on, say one source. One source. Many, resources. many resources. And this is the great, because I remember how bad you were. Amazing. 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 Give, give her a big God bless you. Come on. Come on. Anybody else? Any other testimonies? I think there's a couple more. There should be from any of some of those meetings. Anybody else was touched in those services quickly? I'm just waiting a moment here. You were touched? Come to me, ma'am. You were touched? Well, come here. Yeah, I'm here. Well, what happened to you? Well, mine wasn't healing. It was financial. Well, that'll work. And um, you said, I think it was at the Marriott, and you said, if your middle name's Marie, get up here. <gasps> and my name's Victoria Marie. So I came up, but then I saw all these other people, and I was like, no. It's for me. <laughs> and God you, don't have enough. God don't have enough. But what's so interesting is, because um, 
I work, I work in Asia liberating persecuted Christian families from slavery. And you, so you, you prayed for all of us with the middle name Marie and the fire of God came on me and you said great wealth is coming into your hands and the fire of God hit me and I I fell out and I just laid there under the power and I said I I know what it's for it's for the slaves since since that meeting Almost a million dollars has come into my hands. Um, at that time, we had liberated about 10 families, but to date, we've liberated 300 families. And, and they, they're, we pay off their, their bonded labor debt. We relocate them. They come under the care of a local pastor. We start a new business for them. And um, it's just like amazing. And I know that a million dollars is not great wealth. So there's a lot more on the way. Boy, that, the, the energy coming out of her, the anointing into this audience. You know, anytime you want to interview any of these people, I mean, go for it. If you think these are set up or we're embellishing anything, go to these people, meet them in the parking lot. Pastor will probably give you their name, uh, uh, if we know them. But this girl here, you're a member here, right? Oh, you're not a member. Where do you go to church? The river in Tampa. The river in Tampa. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. What's going on here? When you were here the last time, yeah. I was having problems walking and bending and all that. Walking and bending. And, and I've gotten worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And now I can't do anything much. When I sit down, my uh -huh. daughter has to help me So out. you have a testimony or just a healing? What are we after here? <laughs> well, it's a testimony and a healing. What's the testimony? That I can't do anything now that I used to. Oh. Okay. Let's flip that pancake. <laughs> um, so what, what can't you do, ma'am? What, what are you having a hard time with? I can't walk you can't by walk myself. Where? where can't you walk? By yourself? Mm -hmm. Like you can't walk up here by yourself? No. Because I, I, I lose my balance. You won't do it tonight. Praise the Lord. I hope Let's not. go. Come on. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Go, just go, just go. Come on, march.
Can you sit down? No, no. <laughs> You're up here for the rest of the night now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go sit down. Go ahead. Go ahead. You okay? Where are you, where are you sitting? I want to see you walk the whole way back and pick your knees up. Come on, march a little bit for me. Pick your knees up. Pick them up. What are you going to do? What, 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 what? What? When I get down, I can't get up. Well, okay. We solved one thing, ma'am. We, okay. <laughs> Where do, you, where do you want to get down? How do you want to do this? Do you want to sit down? Okay. Let's come up here. Let's do the front row right here. Right here. Right here. Okay. You ready? You're, what's your name? Char Shirley. Okay. So, Shirley, you're overthinking this. I want you to not think about it. I'm going to count to three. I want you to come to me. Just jump, jump up and come to me. When I count to three, you ready? One, two, three. Come on, let's go. <laughs> She's touching her floor. do Shirley what do you want to do you want to get up from the floor okay Do what you want to do. We're here to help you. You just did that. She's excited that she can do it. Come on, Shirley. Come on, Shirley. You're the daughter? Uh -huh. What is this a miracle? Oh. Oh, thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it Where is. Where do you go to church? Where do you go to church? Here. here. Right here. Okay. Oh, this, this we found so one that goes here. Oh. Tell you how wonderful this is. I can do all this. Uh -huh. I haven't been able to. Do that again. Do that again. It's amazing. Tell these, tell these people how amazing that is. Tell them. It's amazing. It's wonderful. I can do that. I've even lost my balance and everything. Come on, say, say, say this word, the anointing. Say it again, the anointing. The presence. 
It's all about the presence. That's what this is. I didn't do anything. He, he did it. I know, but I think it's wonderful. I think you're wonderful. I think God's wonderful. I think everybody's wonderful. <laughs> When I sit down, I couldn't get up. Say that again? When I would sit down, I well, couldn't Well, that's over. Get... Don't dwell on that. That's over. Okay. Remember the converters in here. The converter. Oh, okay, okay. You process. Okay. Hey, I was able to do that twice. You did that twice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> did you forget you did it the first time? <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. I'm not used to doing it. <laughs> She's not. <laughs> oh, I think more is getting healed here than that. I, I, <laughs> wonderful, I tell you, it's wonderful. Who are you waving at now? Who's that? They're from our church. Okay. Mm -hmm. What church is that? The, the, oh, right here. Yeah, yeah, okay. this church. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to stand in my own line here pretty soon. <laughs> Give Shirley a big God bless you. Come on. You know how you process how you consider everything what you talk about what you reiterate what you rehearse is your reality what you re we're in the same room but we're not in the same realities all of our realities here are very different it's based on what you think what, what you say that converter how you're processing what you're seeing so you, already you process, that's why I stayed away from it because God wants you to process how real this is. See, the more that real you see, then this, you're accountable for what you see, right here, what you see. It's not just some preacher telling you a story or a Bible story you're reading, but it's, you're seeing things with your own eyes. That has to affect you. Sooner or later, we'd like it to be sooner. Look at your neighbor right now and say, you need more help than I do. Come on, tell you. <laughs> yes, ma'am, come to me quickly. Come to me. You have a testimony. What happened? When you were at the Marriott Ho Hotel, that's the when Marriott. I... The Marriott? Boy, those were meetings at that Marriott. That's when I first met you. Okay. And uh, I was suffering at that time with diabetes that... The blood sugar numbers were off the scale. The doctors could not regulate my blood sugars whatsoever. And you called it out. And I was one of the first ones down in the line. And you said, I must really want my healing. I did. And then you said something about asking God for something that you don't believe that he could ever, you know, you've always asked him and asked him and asked him you told him you told him to ask one more time and i did that night and two weeks later i went to the doctor's appointment i don't have diabetes <laughs> Tell them. 
that I would have it for the rest of my life, that I'd have to do the finger sticks, and that the insulin that they had me on was no longer working, so they had to take, take and put me over on another insulin, and that one was not working either. My blood sugars kept rising, kept rising. He said, if they continue to rise, you're going to have to go on a pump. And then, I don't know. And where do you, where do you live? You live here? I live here. Your church is here. here. Isn't that cool? Have you told anybody about this? Oh, absolutely. They look at me like I'm crazy. But I don't go. That's, that's why you turn social media into supernatural media. Don't just get on there and say, hi, I'm down to Starbucks and uh, it's a beautiful day. Get on there and shock some people. You know, you be the awakening that creates an awakening. Hey, you all out there in in, uh, Facebook friend land. I mean, let me tell you what happened to me. Be brave, be bold and see what heaven will do. Heaven will open for you in a greater way. If you confess me before men, I'll talk to you about to my dad. That's a favor verse. That's about favor. It's not about at the altar when you're saved. That's all about favor, how to increase favor in your life. Where things just happen because they happen. How many like free things? Come on, how many like free things? With not a lot of labor attached to it. Favor, open doors, divine appointments. Increase, extend extension in years, blessing, generational blessing on the children. A new car, a new tractor. Come on, somebody. A new cowboy hat, new Stinson hat. Come on, somebody say something. Here. That's a remarkable. And, and you've told some people about this? Yes, I have. I even told the doctor because she asked me how, what did I do? Was it she my asked diet? you, how, what did you do? Was it my diet? Was what it your I, diet? What, what did tell I do? Me, please tell me what you told the doctor. I told him that I went to your meeting and I got healed. <laughs> See, what's your name? Treva. Who? Treva. Shreva? Treva. Treva. That's a different name, Treva. Beautiful name. It's it's people like Treva. She looks harmless. No, no, but I mean, she doesn't look like a bad person or a terrorist or something like that, right? She's just a basic person who came to a meeting, got touched, but has this supernatural story. Do you know how many people would love to not have diabetes? And sitting down in this Treviva, Treva, is this volcanic story. This is how the revival in these times is coming. It's not just great preachers on the stage. It's these stories being released all over the earth, all over Tulsa. Imagine if all of you would just tell your story. Don't be ashamed of that. Get over that. Get bold. Get, Get strong. And you'll see more will come. He'll test you with what he has given you to see if he can give you more. You hear me? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Come on, put your hands up and say, Lord, I got to tell my story. I got to tell somebody what God has done for me. This is resurrection weekend. I'm coming out. I'm rolling this stone away. No more shut in. No more shut up. I'm going to shout it out. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Oh, amazing. Are you married? No. You're not married? Okay, children? I, I had a daughter and she got shot in the head by her boyfriend. By her boyfriend. So she's in heaven? She's in heaven. Yes. Precious, precious story. Lord, I pray just pour oil and wine into the wounds. Make her a whole woman. A whole woman, I pray. Here comes the power, lady. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. What happened? Testimony. 
I'm sorry? I have testimony. So when you were here last time, uh -huh. I had been having uh, dealing with a lot of severe pain in my back. Okay. And you called that out, and so I came up here. It had been about five or six months. I couldn't sleep. You and couldn't was, sleep? No, it hurt so badly. And I was taking care of my mom, which was making things even harder for me. And so I came up here, and I knew I'd gotten my healing. And about a day later or two, I was walking around the house, and I realized pain anymore. I haven't had that pain in my back at all. And I became a partner with your ministry. <laughs> the Lord. So who have you told? Have you told friends or? Yeah, and my family. They knew. I talked to my son every day and I was just, he knew. He's like, Mom, what are you going to do? And I've just been in so much pain, really bad. And I'm believing for complete wholeness in other areas as well. Put your hands up, lady. Holy Ghost, we give you praise. We thank you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is stronger than the spirit of fear. The Holy Spirit is stronger than any other spirit out there. So when you bring Holy Spirit into those other spirits, I'm telling you, you break the yoke of bondage. But you have to exude that. You have to say it, sing it, sow it. You got to do it in some way. This is amazing. The Holy Ghost is taking a label off of you, a stereotype. You've been known one way most of your life, and God's saying, you're not that girl, you're not that woman anymore. He said, I've changed her. I put a new jar of salt into her reservoir. He's healing the generational curse here that's been in your family line for years. What they had, you'll never get. What they faced, you'll never face. Because you've testified this night, God said, I am going to wipe you clean. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, I want to hear God give a big, big praise. Last time you were here, you didn't lay hands on me. I kept waiting for you to call it out. <laughs> and I had this issue, and a lot of people saw my eyes would water like for months like maybe nine months they just all of a sudden started watering so everybody would always think i was crying and literally i couldn't wear contacts i couldn't do anything and underneath my eyes would bleed it it watered so bad so like during your meeting i'm i'm doing this and i had a people thought i was really touched because i kept having to dry my eyes <laughs> i mean literally it was from like the last time you were here in the fall i think was he here in the or uh, yeah, it, it was almost nine months that it had happened. So wow. I'm up here and I'm thinking he's going to call eyes wow. and I'm going to. And then you were here on Monday night also. I don't remember how long you were here or whatever, but I know you're here on Monday night because I had a doctor's appointment that I had been waiting for because I had gone to specialist, specialist, specialist. And so I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't go to the doctor's appointment. I'll, I'll get in faith and, you know, da, 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 da. So I thought, well, I'm bleeding under my eyes. <laughs> and so I went to the doctor. That's pretty serious stuff. No, it, was a, it was a big deal because, I, I mean, I would wake up. I mean, when it first started happening, I'd come home, and my, my kids, my husband, they'd say, are you crying? Are you all right? I'm like, yeah, it's just. So literally, I, every pants and shirt and jacket I'd wash would always have Kleenexes in them. I'd, I mean, because it, it just watered. It, it was, it was, it was. It wasn't dehabilitating for my life, but it was every 30 seconds I was having to deal with it. And I'd go to wow. sleep and the water would, or whatever it was, would pool underneath my eyes. And your skin is so thin, it would break my skin and it would bleed like under my eyes. So I went to this doctor, this specialist after specialist. After, this is the guy everybody said, you got to go see this guy. So I waited three months for this appointment. I went on the Monday, you were here. And um, I sat in the chair and I said, well, everybody says it's dry eye, it's this, it's this. He's like, all right, well, let's, let's look at it. And he looks at it and he, um, he looks in my uh, eyes and he, he looks at me and says, there's nothing wrong with you. And I said, no, well, no, you don't understand. <laughs> my eyes are so, you know, they water so much, they bleed, it just, it won't stop. He goes, yeah, whatever all that medicine is they gave you, because I, I kept getting drops and drops and $200 of drops, $150 oh my. of drops, $300 of drops. They were the, supposed to be the cure and it, none of them would work. He said, there's nothing wrong with you. Just stop taking the medicine. I, I was like, I was really kind of frustrated because I'm thinking, I'm paying for you and I paid for everybody else. And I came here and I'm like, no, you don't under, and I thought, I'm an idiot. This guy is telling me there's nothing wrong with me. 
So I said, okay, so you're telling me to go home, throw all the medicine away, and, and my eyes were fine. He goes, yeah, I think you just eat, that I, you're going to be fine. So I left. I threw all my medicine away. I came to church, and after a couple of uh, days, I mean, they've never watered again. I mean, it's been completely, like, it's, it's amazing. It was a big deal. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. You know, Paul, you and I were talking before the service, and you, you were talking about the offering tonight. And you said, Billy, just do, just take the offering. Yeah. And I, I'm grateful for every time I've been here, you've been so good to Billy Burke, to our ministry. You've been very, very good. So if you haven't given anything, just don't move your face. Just look straight ahead and amen. <laughs> just shake your But really, we, we really... It's getting very difficult getting to people. So we've really taken to the highways, the media. You know, Brother Copeland's asked us, we're on, come on to the Victory Network. We've been on there for eight or nine weeks. It's going really, really well. But everything, everything is costing more to get to the people. And in these offerings this weekend, if you could just think of helping us we're buying all new cameras. We want to create a big studio in Tampa Bay where people can come live and be part of the services, fly in, get a pina colada, sit under a palm tree, <laughs> hug a dolphin. Come on, somebody. And then get healed and go home. Can you say amen? And I'm, I'm just grateful to be a person that's been healed and the fact that I'm still able to do this we push a heavy, heavy schedule. Yeah. And uh, we have been putting on over a million miles a year in the air. So that's a lot of meetings, a lot of flying. And I think it's time to really develop something in Florida where people can come and be a part of it. And in this day and age, we don't know what's going to happen to culture. But we know that revival is about to strike the planet. Come on, somebody. Come on. So... If you could help me tonight, put your hands up all over the place. I just want you to really give willingly and freely tonight. There's no pressure. If you're in a difficult place and you can't give tonight, then maybe you can give tomorrow, Saturday night or Sunday night. This isn't about bleeding you of your money. It's about these healings are happening more and more and more. I told you about the man paralyzed. When you give into this kind of a work, you, you reap what this work has. Yes. You can reap health. You can reap healing. You can reap it for you, for your family. It's just a Bible truth. And it's an opportunity tonight to help us do more as we expand our virtual services, our programs. Building this studio is going to be quite a chunk, quite, quite a big undertaking. But we have people that have showed up that can help us do this. The technical people, the cameras, you know, so we're right now surveying the area for the right facility. Don't know what part of Florida that will be. If it's Tampa, more Tampa, Orlando. I don't know exactly, but as soon as I know, you'll know, right? Yeah. And then when you go on vacation, right? Yep. How many go on vacation? How many don't do vacation no more? <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, we have, a, we have a mouse in our state. He's a mouse. He brings everybody down to see us, and then we get them saved when they go to see the mouse. <laughs> but if you could help me tonight with this. Paul, how, you want to come up and tell us how to give the money? Who do they give the gifts to tonight? Praise the Lord. Isn't this wonderful to be in his presence tonight? Amen. So we're so very grateful. Praise the Lord. Anytime that, you know, uh, Brother Billy can come here, it's just beautiful. Because I believe that God wants to touch this city. And uh, we've had so many wonderful Gosh, things happen nice. over all these years. Amen. But how many people believe the best is yet to come? Amen. Say that to your neighbor beside you. The best is yet to come. And so we've seen tremendous healings through the years. God has used so many, many people. And for Brother Billy to take time out of his schedule to come to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Amen. He was telling me, you know, the room that we got him at the hotel, he just opens up the blinds and there's the city of faith right there. Amen. Just a reminder of what one man did under God. Amen. Well, I, I just believe that God wants to do something great. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Oral Roberts says something good 
is happening That's and right. to expect a miracle every day. Well, praise the Lord. We can make that miracle happen for someone else. Amen. This might be a seed sown here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Go ahead, brother. Yes. Oh, this might be a seed sown here in Tulsa, seat. Oklahoma. Amen. But you this know, can go around the world. He praise just the gave, Lord. Let me say this. I, I was with Oral. Oral was 90, I think about 90 years old, and I was with him in his home. I took a gift to him from our ministry, you know, to hand to him. And I said, Dr. Roberts, I said, here's a gift for, for your ministry. He said, Billy, before I take that, I want to ask you one question. I said, what? He said, is that a gift or is that a seed? And I thought, well, I got it. I'm going to get the right one here. Which one would he like the best? <laughs> I think he's going to go with the seed word. I don't think. And I said, well, I, I, I believe it's, he said, let, him, he said, let me help you. He's your see if, if this is a gift, then old Roberts, he said his name. He said, old Roberts don't have any confidence if you get in return. But if you tell me that's a seed, then by the word of God, yeah. by old Roberts' faith, you're going to get a big time return on that. I said, it's definitely a seed. It's definitely a seed. So, so whenever you're giving, make sure, because we say words like donation. We say little offering, contribution. contribution. Make sure you know that when you're putting your money in, it's a seed. I'm, I just thought I should share that with you tonight. Come on, say, it's definitely a seed. Come on. Oh, praise the Lord. And there's a miracle happening with that seed. That Hallelujah. Today. Praise the Lord. So the information is on our your uh, screens for you right now. Praise the Lord. If you make your checks payable to LRMC, LRMC, everything is on the screen to let you know all the information that you need. But especially if you're given by checks, LRMC. Also, if you're given by way of credit card, put all your digits on there. Praise the Lord so that we can, uh, you know, process it in the way that you would like us to diligently and then of course all the other ways that you can give paypal amen and uh also cash app 84321 by text all these wonderful ways those people that are watching online After tonight this, wherever you are you me? also can be yeah, part of this amen and we will ensure awesome, that your awesome seed so awesome tonight girls. will get Thank to billy burke's ministry amen why because i tell you great harvest is coming back to tulsa oklahoma in the name of jesus so this thing bigger tonight amen think broader tonight let me just pray over you as you give tonight in the name What's of Jesus. Father, here? we just thank you for What's seed sown. Father God, every every seed sown is a harvest attached to it. What's going on we just here? thank you, Father, tonight for over and above, exceedingly abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works within us. Well, Father, tonight we release our faith. For our Brother Robert says, seed faith, we have it Can too in the name of Jesus Can to believe for that harvest in the name of Jesus to see Billy Not Burke tonight. Tonight you do walk. greater and beyond anything that he has done before. If you believe that, shout a big amen. Hallelujah. Ushers, go ahead and serve the people tonight. Amen. If you're given by the way of text, go ahead and text your giving right now, 84321. Amen. If you're cash up and dollar sign Millennial Church, amen, there will be up opportunities for you to write it in there, Billy Burke, but we will assure you as good sures, praise the Lord, that Billy will be well blessed by the time these meetings are over in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. as well. We're not finished, but tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and Sunday 10 a.m. and Sunday 6 p.m., praise the Lord. And if you're watching tonight from Tulsa, Oklahoma, come on, come into church. It is time to get back in church again. Amen. Father, tonight over everybody's given, we call them blessed. We thank you that the spirit of increase is upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. And Father, that wealth not only is coming to our sister, but that wealth Wealth is coming to every single one of us to do over and above, Father God, for the kingdom in Jesus' precious name. If you believe that, shout a big amen. He has done great
you are the God that he left me. Come on. You are the Lord, my healer. You said your word. You said your word and healed all disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God, you are the God that healed me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my here you come up to me don't let anybody sit down yet you come to me yeah quickly who's with you who's with you come to me both of you quickly Look, I'm talking about these two here that's fine if you, these two right here what brings you here tonight we go to church here. you go to church here absolutely what's going on here with you tonight last week I had a pet scan and they discovered a lump in my left lung. And um, COPD is being healed right now. COPD, come quickly. COPD right now. He's the power of God's healing. COPD. The mighty Holy Ghost is healing that. There's a lupus here tonight. There's a lupus that's being wonderfully healed. Get that lupus condition down here quickly. Fibroid tumors are leaving right now. Right now. They're telling you about the heart? No, it's the lump in the lung. There's a lump inside. Inside the you lung. You can't feel it. Well, I, I'm, I have no symptoms, but they said it is can. They say it's cancer. I say Dr. Jesus is healed. Come on, give him a shout. Yeah. He left me. You are the God. I prayed for this couple and he fell. This guy. Yes. Huh? Yes, I felt that power. I'm still feeling. I gotta have stairs. Let him go. Don't let, let him go. The power's on him. My God. Just stay close. Stay close. Stay close, stay close. And heal my disease. Come on. You are the Lord, my healer. Can somebody sing? Come on. You are the God that healed me. You are the Lord, my You are 
the Lord, my healer. You don't even have to have knowledge of a condition to be healed. It's better to be healed of something you didn't know you had. It's another battle once you know it. Well, how could that happen? You just, the presence, yield to it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of this. It's not how you fall, it's how you get up. It's how you get up. Spend your grace wisely. If this is a real experience and you're coming up off that floor, you, you have to attach your expectation to that. Or it won't mean anything to you. By his stripes you fall. No, by his stripes you're healed. You're healed. We're going to see miracles here tonight. We are. And tomorrow night. And all day Sunday. You're going to come into meetings here, my friend, that you're not going to be able to close. I'm not saying it's this weekend, but you're, you're coming into something really, really the, the presence that God has around this church. He's already putting this church on the minds and on the lips of people. There's people already don't even, they may not even know it, and they're going to move here from all over the world. To be a part of this church because of the worship, the praise, the miracles, the love of God that's in the people. Roll up your sleeves. You that go to this church are going to have a lot of work to do in helping these people get from point A to point B. This is the healing center. Come on, give God a major, major shout. What's going on here with you? What's going on here? Blasted by the Holy Spirit, I'm pretty drunk. I believe God is doing more than just my lungs for breathing in fiberglass years ago. Breathing fiberglass? Uh, yeah, helping out with in insulation. But there's more going on. I'd say so, yeah. <laughs> I spent Just so you know, I came here with a message for tonight. <laughs> so much for the message, right? I mean, I came out here and I just, I felt this, the sweep of this and I, I'm yielding to it. Well, hey, sir, come on over here. How do you feel right now? Feel good. He's scraping you. Amen. Praise He's scraping God. you. I received that. I Ezekiel 26, 4 says, I will scrape you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. When somebody gives you a word, listen to me, do your best to get the CD, write it down, call the church, ask your neighbor, quit taking the word of God irrelevant, indifferent, an indifferent attitude. I got a word. What was it? Ah, something about a fence. What do you mean something about a fence? God takes time out of 8 billion people on the planet to talk to you. And you don't remember it? That's good. He's after some people today that he can really pour into. Does anybody here want to be one of those persons? I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. People are on the move. Yes. They're not just marching in. The people that are marching into the borders. They, they want to taste the freedom. Yes. People are hungry. Yes. They're looking for a spiritual infusion. Yes. They don't realize what they're after. is isn't just natural food right. in another country, in another group of politics. People are hungry for God today. They want to sing a song that means something. They want to feel the presence. They want to take something home that will go home and invade their house. I'm telling you, it's really amazing. What's happening to you, man? What is going on here? You know, when you called out uh, 
C uh, COPD. Yeah, I'm one of them. Well, the power's all over you. Come on, somebody, you gotta shout! Come on, you are the God that He left me. You are the Lord, my healer. That's just to help you. I'm going to help you, but you go under that power on the way up, on the way back to your seat. Uh, here's what you say I receive. Amen. Don't leave any doubt in the devil's mind about why you fail. There's people that get so used to falling, but they never receive. Because they like the feeling of the anointing versus the, the effect of the anointing. God's done with this playing with the anointing. He's done with it. There's too many hungry people that need help that are desperate. And they're on the way. Pole dancers are on their way. Drug addicts are on the way. Come on. Come on. Addicts. People that can't get off of freebasing. There, there's people that are really addicted. They really have real issues. And they're not getting delivered. They're into so much stuff on the internet. It's just that this, that's what they feed on. And that food produces fear and uncertainty. You can't feed on wrong and live right. Think right and act right. You can't do it. You have to believe right to live right. And we got to get cleaned up. This is supposed to be a bride without spot or wrinkle. Quit helping the devil out every day of your life. You're helping the devil shorten your lifespan. Help God expand your lifespan. Yes. Add years to your life instead of taking years off your life. How many want to go to heaven? Let me see. Let me see. How many want to go to heaven? How many want to go right after the service? Okay. Ha ha. Ha ha. Why wouldn't you want to go? I want to do it. Don't cover for them. Because you know you got to get some things right. This man's being wonderfully healed. How do you feel? I feel good. That's what I come here for. I saw you on TV. My pastor and my Where's your mother, pastor at? He's right there. Right You're the pastor, ma'am? He's my pastor. Where, where, where? where? <laughs> come here. Come on, pastor. Is that your wife? Is that your wife? Your mother? You're the pastor. What, what do you know about this parishioner of yours? This well, I know that she has, she has, she had diabetes and uh, COPD. Uh, the doctor said that she had that, and she says she's coming for a healing. That's what I know. She says she's coming for. And where's your where's your church at? It's in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Forty six fourteen Prospect, Christ Unlimited Church of God in Christ. my church members with me. Uh, Who, who's with this pastor? Come on down here. Come on down here. My mother and my... Your mother! Get that mother down here. Come on, mom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a blessing coming on this church! Yes, Lord. I need some catchers down here, some workers. Holy Spirit's on this whole church. My word, the whole group's coming. Hallelujah. 
You're all from where at? Where at Michigan? Kansas City, Kansas Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Mama, what do you think of this, Mama? Beautiful, beautiful. I've been looking at you. I've been watching you. I didn't know of you. My husband passed. He's gone to glory in October, but in September. And I don't know how it was that I began to see you on TV. Yeah. I think I was looking at something with Copeland, and I saw something about you. Could be. You. Could be. But ever since then, I've been looking at you all through the day and all through the night. Oh my. Oh my birthday day. Yeah. Because I knew something was here for me, mm. and I'm looking for it. These are some of our members here. I see it. Hallelujah. What's, a, what's going on with you in this walker? What's going on with you? Mm. Talk to me. The be working on my balance. On what? My balance. Yeah. He has a balance you won't have any anymore. I'll not be, after tonight. I'll be half you won't need this after tonight. The power of the Holy Ghost. You won't need it. Come on, somebody. Somebody got to give God praise. We just might have church here. Yeah. Help him up, help him up, help him up, help him up. What's his name? That's Carl. Carl? Come on, Carl. Come on, just walk, Carl. Just walk. Just walk. Just walk, Carl. Just walk. You can walk. Don't think about it. Walk. Somebody, come on, give praise. God be the glory. Oh my God! To oh God, my God be the glory. Up, Carl. To God, God be the glory. Walk up the things he has done. With His blood, He has saved. Your whole 
church is turned around. There's a fresh fire coming in that church, Pastor. Come on. How do you feel? Huh? You feel good? Yes, sir. You feel the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. You feel strong? Yes, sir. I was shaking my neck, but I You were feel, what? I was shaking my neck, but I feel good. He was shaking in his knee. Shaking in the knee, but you feel good. Yes, sir. You felt the Holy Ghost shaking. Uh, I got a seizure. Huh? Seizure. Seizure. He was so sick when he was... So Seven and a half, he took sick with what? Seizures. Was it grand mal seizures? Grand mal. Yes. They're the worst, grand mal. Yes. You're not having no seizure now. I can't. Huh? I don't want to. I can't think on top of it. But my mom always say, have faith in God. Come on. I came tonight to um, see and get a um, blessing and healing from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I watch you on TV. There you go. And my mom, she saw her. She sure be watching you. She got you on her cell phone. <laughs> 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 yeah, you be talking all. On stage, out there, I'm not that man, powerful. I was not, before I became here, I said, oh, he got to preach or teach. Yeah. I don't know what you got to do, but you know you got to do something good. You got to hold your hand. So when you were new kid, you said you had, um, I think you had, Answer. Yes. But you're a young kid, yeah. but you got here. Yeah. I don't know how old you were, but you were young. Yeah. You got healed. That's right. And then you got stronger and stronger. That's it. At the north. That's it. I could do that. Oh, too. my God. <laughs> He's connecting dots. Yes! Yes! Do you see this? Number one, I understood him. Number two, he's talking faith. He said, I can do this. Pastor. Yes, sir. You might have a riot back at your church. I think I'm going to have huh? one, yeah. I think I will. <laughs> I will. I will. I'm just still in the aftermath of this. Your name again? Carl. Carl. What do you think Carl. of this, Carl? Are you excited? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't need that walker no more, Carl. No, sir. No, sir. Huh? No, sir. Are you healed? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I, I, can't, I can't wait to see you. For real. Because I know you got power in your hands. Because he healed you when you were no kid. Yeah. I think you were 12 or in there. Yeah. But but you are no kid. You can walk. Yeah. No, nothing. Yeah. You would just cancer or something. But you here. And you and you preaching and teaching. Nobody not gonna knock you down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
I'm letting him talk for a couple of reasons. For him, he's, he's stirred up. But I want you to hear this. He's connecting these dots. I saw you on TV. Well, we all know that that comes and goes. But the anointing stays. Come on, put your hands up. Everybody in the room, say, I need the anointing. I don't need everybody. I need those people to sign to me. But I need the anointing above everything. Oh, God, help me. Find the anointing. Stir it up. Keep it stirred up. I can live in the anointing every day of my life. Now give God praise. Come on. So what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do, Carl? I just, I just want to. Well, well, God, he want me to be a pastor. When I was no kid, I always say, I want to preach, but um, we all get one word. Just no night. The part of me, Joe, ran away. Part of me here, the part of me gone. So I don't know what to You're do. You're a different man. I just, just, when I see somebody preaching, and I'm, I'm a pastor, too. Your pastor? You remind me I'm bad way I was a new kid. So I I need to be a pastor because I be talking too much. <laughs> come on, let's go do this. Come on. Come on, come on now. Come on, Carl. Pick him up, pick up his knees, pick him up. Pick up those knees like this, pick him up like this. Bet you could do the moonwalk pretty good. You do the moonwalk? Oh, I I want to. You want to do the moonwalk? Um, I don't, I don't think I could do that, but I don't want, I don't want to go down when Michael Jackson go down. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Yeah. Michael Justin, he come down here. I don't know. My mom said, you kill yourself, you come down. But it got um, nice and burning. And you die by your own self, you come up. But you got to make sure that God say, I'm deprived for me like that because you don't want to hear that. I don't want to hit that either. Go ahead, walk up there, just a couple steps. Just walk. Pick those legs up for me, though. Come on, bro. Pick them up. Pick those legs up. Come on, bro. Come on, church. Your name is Hi.
born with tratosomy 18P, which is an extra chromosome. And uh, the doctor said that he wouldn't walk, he wouldn't talk, and he wouldn't. Well, he's do doing a whole lot of that he's tonight. He's doing a whole lot of it. And God, Pastor, I'm excited for you and for your church. Yes, you're going to be here tomorrow too. Yes. I'm Sunday, you're going to back to your church. I'm going back to my church. You'll, you'll be here tomorrow night. I'll be here tomorrow okay. night. The name Thank of your you. church is? Christ Unlimited Church of God in Christ. Christ Unlimited Church, church of God, God in Christ. In yes. Christ. I love yes. it. I love Thank it. I love it. Okay, Carl, you coming tomorrow night? Yes. I'm coming. You're not going to use, you going to use the walker going out or no? Um, no, sir. No, sir. Oh, yeah, pop. He's pumped. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. That you. He was gonna do you. Powerful. You see what I mean? I want to be a pastor. I should have told you to go there. I just got nine. So I'm nine for my pastor. He'll teach you. Stick you. close. That's a good pastor. To bring all these people down here tonight. It's a good pastor. It's a good pastor. It's a good pastor. What's that? My back was out of whack. Yeah? All the way coming here. I couldn't move. I had to sit all. And I'm like, um, oh, my backs feel good. I'm going to the choir practice. I'm supposed to be going on Tuesday so they can line my back back up because it was out of place and my arm and neck and I couldn't do this and I'm like, whoa, I know it was God. <laughs> Ooh, I felt it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I feel good. <laughs> I'm glad that I came. I am. Ooh, I think you need one more touch. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't do that. No, they said that they had to line me up because my right leg is like two inches shorter. Than the other one, and I didn't want to. Your break. right leg, this is shorter than the yeah. left leg. And my husband, they showed him my leg. Where's Where your husband at? Where did my husband go? <laughs> <laughs> he knows. I can do this, man. I don't have to get that doctor no $600. Woo! <laughs> I'll say this, listen to me carefully. The peek behind the curtain of the evil empire out there. They're gonna use diseases continually. So you're gonna have to really locate your faith in the promises. You're gonna have to become full time. Our protection is being in this full time, abiding in the vine getting to know some of these scriptures that talk about strength, and healing, wholeness, longevity, protection. Because the biggest thing out there is fear. People are afraid, afraid of everything. It's causing anxiety, restlessness. Who can I hug? Who can I be next to? Jesus touched lepers, was never afraid of getting leprosy. He didn't go, well, let me see here. You have leprosy? You know, well, no, he went up, boom, touched them. Come on, say it. They're going to get what I have. I'm not going to get what they have. Say this, such as I have. Give I to you. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. What's going on here, young man? What's going on here tonight? I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh-huh. Who's with you tonight? You're the mom? Yeah. Talk got, to me. He's got four brothers. He's got four brothers. He was diagnosed at the age of four of muscular dystrophy. When did you get the huh? At the age of four, he was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. 
from the day the doctor told me that, I said, God is his healer. And we've spoke healing every day since. Beautiful. And Caleb's faith has risen and risen, and he's been speaking faith and claiming this. And he's just believing. Even his six-year-old little brother said he's going to leave his chair here tonight. And we just believe. We just simply believe. Wow. What do you think about what your mom said? Hmm? I believe it because I felt the faith rise in me. You felt faith rising in you. Okay. And what's his name again? Caleb. Caleb. That's a good name. You got a good name. Who, your, is your husband here? Or? Yes. Where's he at? Oh, the whole family. Come on, can I have the whole family? Come on, come on the big guy over here, yeah. Got all the nice people you have. Well, I've got, we've got five boys ourselves, and then grandma, both grandmas are here and some cousins. Oh, my. You brought the whole, yeah. you brought the gallery here, right? And your son's name again? Caleb. 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 So, Caleb, we want to we walk tonight? want to stand? What do you want to do? I can't move my arms or my legs. So he can move, but he, he doesn't have the strength to raise, you know. Well, that's be, I haven't prayed for you he yet. Was, he was walking when he was a child, and he slowly progressed to where there's, you know, the strength. And you're from gone. where? Where you come from? Here. Tulsa. I mean, not this church, but yes, Tulsa. You have home church? Or what? You have a home church? We go to Victory. Victory. It's a good church. Yeah. yeah. Not bad for church just beginning, right? <laughs> just teasing. It's a great church. So, um... So what do you want to do? You want to you want to try and stand? I want to try and lift my arms. You want to try and lift your arms. That's what you'd rather do, your arms. Let's all put our hands up all over the place. We want to help. We don't want to break anybody's faith. We want to help faith. It's a sensitive issue here. This guy's this guy's got faith. He said he feels the faith. Feels it rising. Caleb. That's right. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for Caleb tonight. Thank you that you touch this young boy, this young boy in this chair. Touch the cranial, touch the brain. Touch all of those lobes. Touch the firing pins, Holy Spirit. And I pray the power go through this body. Let him be able to move his arms. Let him be able to move his arms. We give God a mighty praise. We give God a mighty praise. We give Him a mighty praise. We give God a mighty praise. Here it comes. That power's going to go through you. You hear me? That mighty power of the Holy Ghost. That power of the Holy Ghost. Go through that power. That mighty Holy Ghost. Go through Caleb. Move your arms, Caleb. Just move them. Just move them. Move them. Move them out. Move them out. Move those arms. Come on, move those arms out. Move those arms out now. Move that right arm. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Move it, move it. He's moving those arms. Move those arms. Come on, Caleb. Come on, Caleb. That power of the Holy Ghost is going through your body. Hold that hand up. Wave at me. Hold that hand up. Hold it up. Just hold it up. Raise that hand up. I can hear the brush of angels. It's okay, it's okay. Come on, Caleb, look at me. Caleb, look at me. Move him out, just move him out. Just move him out. You can do this. You can do this. His power's moving through you, son. His power's moving in this body. His power's moving in this body. Just raise him, Caleb. Just raise him up. Just let it go. Put him up high, Caleb. We're working a miracle here. Can somebody give God a shout? Come on. Come on, Caleb. Move him out like this. Just move him out like an airplane.
December to flush out my lungs, but I want two new lungs, and I believe it's already started. Two new lungs. Two new lungs, and I got it. I got it. I believe you. I believe you. You are the God that He left me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your
to church at? Uh, it's a cowboy church. You go to Sky a cowboy church? Mm -hmm. Sky Tuck. Sky Tuck, yes, sir. What's it called? Ascension Church. It's basically called a cowboy church. Cowboy church, mm -hmm. okay. And what about your leg, you told me? <clears throat> well, the doctor said it's one of the worst hips he's ever seen. Um, like he wants me to do a total hip replacement in a few weeks. Is it hurting now? Yes. It, it always, is? It always hurts. It always hurts. Yeah. It always hurts. And I need like right now, it's hurting. And I need two new like knees. Like right now. Yes, sir, it's hurting. Yeah. I need two new knees, too. <laughs> but, the, but the hip is uh, definitely... Um, so I just believe God is a That healer. power still moving through this young boy I over receive, here, I'm, I'm telling you. I receive it, Father God. I receive it. He's healing your body right now. You're getting a couple new knees and a new hip. My God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Somebody let me. He let me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord. Fresh send you, creative miracle. You do nothing without another x-ray. You do nothing without another CAT scan. You do nothing. The master is working. The master. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Wow. What's going on over here? Right here. My son, his teeth have been hurting him for many like almost a year now. I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't. My hear. son's teeth have been hurting him for like almost his a year. His knees? His teeth. And he's his gotten teeth. dental work, but it still hurts him. And I believe it's attack of the enemy that I've been combating for. And I'm like, you said Ezekiel, and he's been going by Ezekiel as a nickname. And I'm like, I'm going to go get him out of class to get prayed over for healing over his teeth. <laughs> Supernatural healing. Wow. What do you think, Dad? Amen. That's what we hear tonight. To see God do we what He always does. He's touching you, Caleb. He's touching you, Caleb. That's His mighty presence in you. Oh, the power's on this little boy. Wow. That's the Holy Ghost and on the dad too. Oh my gosh, on the dad. I think he's on the mom. I don't know he's on the mom too. Oh my God, he's on the mother as well. The kid don't have any parents now. Look at that. He's just. <laughs> Beautiful. 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 Two words, steady pressure. When you've had prayer like Caleb and the manifestation doesn't come quick, you don't quit. You keep steady pressure. What? Steady pressure breaks the yoke. Better break the yoke. I felt this faith. I felt it. It's real. It looks like the dad's down and out. No, my dad's. The dad's still down. What do you mean, hallelujah? The wife is saying hallelujah. The dad's. <laughs> There goes the mother and the children. Dad's still laying down here. Pray for us men. We have a rough sometimes. They just... You doing okay tonight? Yes, sir. What's going on over here? Somebody else over here? Ma'am, quickly. I'm just here for the anointing. I want it all. <laughs> You're here for what? I, everybody was coming down for the anointing. Uh-huh. So I was just looking for... Well, come on over. Come on over. There's some left over. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> What's going on? What's happening with you? Oh, not much. Um, we've got a Bible study group, and a bunch of us pray for healing and stuff. Beautiful. And huh? I'm from Wisconsin, okay. so I came down here to see you. 
And um, I just want to feel the power. That's all. I, there's nothing wrong with that. Ma'am, are you okay? What's the matter? I've got a niece that's mentally retarded. Mm -hmm. And people are afraid to pray for her. I lay hands on her, I pray for her, and nothing has happened, and it's been 52 years. And I'm trying to keep my faith up. My brother and sister-in-law think I'm crazy. They make fun of me, and I'm tired of it. And I want my niece to be healed, and I know Jesus can heal her. So why'd you come all this way? Why'd you come here tonight? because I needed a healing in my right ear, but I'm more concerned about my niece. Okay, because so why, then tell me why you're here. Because I want to be healed and I want my niece to be healed. I'm sorry, am <laughs> I not answering the you're question? You're doing a good job, you're doing a great job. I'm, this is my church and this will be my forever church, but um, I'm just grateful to be here. And, uh, give her a big God bless you. Come on, give her. But I want my niece to be healed. Don't go by the manifestation. Go by the promise. She is healed. Oh, see the power. She is healed. She, yeah, it's the power on you. That's what you came for. Just take it. That's what you came for. Let it go through you. Let it break up all this stuff. Let it, that's it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Come on, somebody, you've got a shout. Thank God there's a church in Tulsa that you can come to and do that. This is exactly why a lot of the churches don't allow the gifts to operate. They think this is stigma, this isn't healthy. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. She's getting free. And she has to get a little bit of instruction between healing and manifestation. Some manifestations are instant, some are over time. What's the Bible say in Luke 8, 17, 18? Though I tarry long with you, when I come, I will deliver you speedily. It's right there. Sometimes I tarry long with you. I, I know it seems too long for us, but if Spielberg can bring you to the edge of your seat, if Clint Eastwood can direct the movie and make you want to go see it, then God can stage a miracle. God knows how to set it up so that your whole family, your, the unbelieving neighbors, you look for a reason to believe, not for a reason not to believe. If you look for a reason not to believe, it shows you're more full of fear and doubt than you are faith. Faith people, from my experience, are relatively positive people. They kind of err on the side of, hey, it's going to happen. That's all that she needs, and that's all that that, the grand, I believe it's the granddaughter, right? Niece. niece. Okay, calm down. There's a niece. <laughs> well, you jumped all over me for that. You couldn't wait to get in there and smack me around a little bit. These, this is what's out there. People are desperate. We're not done. I kind of walked out on the stage and I just, I had something to say, but I thought this was what we needed to do tonight. We'll wade in deeper tomorrow night and Pastor Paul will be preaching Sunday morning and then we'll come out Sunday night and really, I don't know what we're going to do, to tell you the truth. But I want some of you to get off of where you are and begin to believe for the rest of what you already have. These stories of diabetes healing, no more shots, no more insulin problems. You've seen some pretty amazing things tonight right here. 
That whole church that came from where? From uh, you're coming back tomorrow night to Kansas City, right? And where's my friend uh, Carl? Where's Carl at? Carl, you coming tomorrow night, Carl? You coming tomorrow night? Yes. Precious, precious night. Help her up. Can you, you help her up a minute? I felt bad for her. Just you got to get you got to get teaching right so that you don't discourage. Do you hear me? Listen to me. You prayed the prayer of faith. Sometimes you got to ride that prayer a long time. I, I wish I was in charge of that. I'm not. But you stay in faith, and I believe. This ant is, you're the ant, right? Yes. You're the strong ant. Yes. You're a mighty ant. Just, you get weary after people. Well, you get years. weary, but you came tonight to get charged up again. Yes. Do you feel charged up again? Yeah, because when I go to see her, I'm going to give her a big old hug. Woo! <laughs> So amazing. Mm -hmm. Was that 951? Is that clock right? It is 951. Early. Who said? The pastor's wife said early. <laughs> so just work that guest minister. Just work him. Just work him. Ride that pony, ride that horse. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Pastor Billy? Um, do you remember me? I do. I, tell me, tell me the yeah. details. I remember. Uh, yeah, I've a couple times seen you, went to the places in Florida when I was there. Yes. Yeah. And, um, of course, I got a good report, too, that I was going to be wonderfully rich as well. Hello, and that um, I was going to live in the penthouse, not paying a penthouse price. Wow. And yes, and thank you for that. And um, it has been coming to me. Amen. You know, what I'm going to do is stand in my own line and get some of those words. I leave these meetings. I say, hey, Lord, hey, Lord. You know, I don't mind helping people, bringing the word, delivering the mail, rich, rich, rich. Oh, Lord, I'm going to stand over here a little bit. No. <laughs> don't muzzle the ox. So all of you that are busy helping, don't, don't get into false humility. He wants every one of you to prosper beyond your wildest imagination. And that's what this church believes. This is a good church. Well, it took you long enough to agree with me on that. <laughs> so what, what's this about? Okay, so um, so since after that, yeah. I've had a lot of, um, of course, the enemy trying to come against, you know, the, everything in my life. Right. Um, so I have some bumps on my head. and then, Have you been checked? No. And I don't, because you know what? I don't want to hear what they have to say. I do believe with all my heart i'm okay and you know the lord said i am but i drove three hours to get here because i had i mean where you come from where do you live i came from branson remember branson missouri yes, yes. yes. so anyway um so then one showed up right here on my right there is it still there yeah you feel it mm -hmm. sure yeah yeah Still there? Mm -hmm.
you're still there. It's just, you know, hurting it, like, uh, just hurt, like that. It's been going on for a long time. How long? God, like three years. It goes away, and then all of a sudden it comes back. But now it has more so because, you know, I'm fighting fate. I'm walking in the faith. I mean, I won't, you know, I won't be moved. I mean, this doesn't move me, it hasn't. These have been there for three years or more. Hallelujah. diagnosed with degenerative disc disease uh -huh. and so every step I take is very painful and then about a year and a half ago I had a car wreck and tore my rotor cuff and had surgery so I'm just in a lot of pain in my body and, and where do you come from tonight I come from Tuttle Oklahoma about two and a half hours from here what's what's the name of the title Tuttle, oh, Tuttle. You, you're her husband. husband that's my husband wonderful he needs a creative miracle okay but for Crohn's <laughs> yeah you have Crohn's do you how long have you had Crohn's? Forty years. Forty five, years. Five surgeries, and uh, that's a horrible disease. Yeah, it's a terrible disease. That and uh, Gillian Bray syndrome. So, have you been prayed for for the Crohn's? Yes. Why don't we believe for both of you tonight? I'm ready. I have faith. I'm so thankful you drove how many, two? Two and a half hours to get here. And Satan tried to stop us from getting here, but oh, yeah. we made it. We couldn't find the car key. <laughs> so we prayed and we found it and we are here. <laughs> we called AAA to make a new key and everything, but we found it and we are here. <laughs> when I touch you, there'll be no more pain. Hallelujah. When I touch you, there'll be no more groans. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? Yes. Pride the Holy Ghost! Pride the Holy Pride the Holy Ghost! Pride the Holy Ghost! Come on, walk, walk, go. believe when you walk out of here you can't let the guy in the car that rode with you bring any kind of doubt I know that I know that I know God say God say the Holy Ghost started something tonight if you didn't get it at all acknowledge that he did start something I can't tell you how crucial that is I'm not the healer. I can't control timing. I can't do any of those things. I'm a very flawed individual. Very weak. I'm connected to a mighty God. I don't have all the answers. Nobody does. But I'll tell you one thing right now. The anointing is sweeping in this auditorium tonight.
What's going on here? I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm drunk in the spirit, so I had to sit. <laughs> Do you still need the wheelchair? Do you still need it? No. How about you, sir? Talk to me, sir. What's going on here? <laughs> well. Are you okay? Yeah. I, 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 I can feel, I can feel the Holy Spirit. And I believe that I'm healed. But I can't tell. Amen. Tell them how Crohn's affects you. Tell them. Oh, a lot of times it's like a hot poker in your gut. And uh, then other times it's like uh, having a baby. <laughs> when, when you have so much scar, five surgeries in the same place. and You've had five surgeries. Yeah. And uh, so it's really restricted there. So even if... Uh, Are you coming back tomorrow night? It wasn't, no. I'm, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just asking. Are you? I coming? want to. I want to get my sister up here. You came all this way for one night? Yes, sir. <laughs> Put your hands up. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit just go through these organs here. There's, you, you've got blockages down here. You've got polyps f functioning in your body, in your colon. He's going to scrape the colon, scrape the polyps. It's going to make you brand new. I believe. I believe that. 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 What's the power on you, sir? Come on, let's all sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you that. You're a mystery. He's weird, but I love him. <laughs> hey, you know what? Listen to me tonight. What would be a great way to conclude this meeting? Do I think everybody here has a ticket to heaven? I probably don't. Does that bother me? It does. It really does. Because you've seen enough here tonight. You've seen enough. On this Passion Week on Good Friday, where he surrendered. He surrendered to begin to move towards the garden and eventually towards the cross. The Via Della Rosa, the whipping post. And I believe there's some people here tonight that would really like to get things right with God. It's the greatest healing of all. There's no doubt, there's no greater healing than you being spiritually cleansed tonight. Sins, bondages, voices, habits, getting cleansed of some people, some places. 
Only he can make all things new. Only he. And in this hour, you don't want to be out here in this hour where the uncertainty rules. Where things are, the rules are changing day by day. You want to know that you got the blood covering over you. I want you to accept Christ tonight. I want you to come to Jesus. I want you to rededicate your life. I want to pray a cleansing prayer down here. A cleansing prayer. I just feel the cleansing powers here. I'm not going to ask you a lot of questions. I don't want to know where you're at, what you're doing. I want you to come down and I want to pray this cleansing prayer over you. But I want you to begin to come right now. Just come, come. Just come from all over. Come. 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 get free from this it can break right here at this altar it can break tonight I'm going to ask David Ellis to do this one more time I'm not going to drag it on but I just it's such a, a, a moment here the love of God the compassion of God is in this room sing it one more time. I'm asking you to get out of your seat and make your way down here. Husband and wife, come. Come on, anybody in this room, come. One more time. Let's sing it, David. doing this because your name matters you matter from where Barbara Blanchard, Oklahoma. where's that at oh about three hours away three hours oh, away oh my 
ma'am. Becky. Be Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow. We know where that's at. Yes, ma'am. We were hit. From? Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow. Ma'am? Scarlet. Scarlet. Scarlet from? Uh, Sepulpa. Sepulpa. Okay. What do we have over here? Rosia. What's going on here? Talk to me. She, she's, uh, she needs a miracle. Brain and body. She's, she needs from, from what? Demon. She has demons? Just, just demonic torment. Who is it? It's my wife. Your wife has demons. And uh, she has been hit that she's going to die this year. Do you want me to help you? Do you want help? I can help you if you'll let me. Yes. Is that right? What's her name? Roseanne. Roseanne, do you want help? I need to know that, Roseanne. Yes. Okay. She, she had gone to... I ran in with her daughter about a couple of years, ago. years ago. Two uh -huh. years ago. Uh -huh. She got on benzodiazepines, um, like tranquilizers, right. for over a year. Right. And she tried to come off of them last year. Right. She couldn't. She ended up, we paid 30 grand to go into it. 30,000. 30,000 into a uh, rehab facility. Uh -huh. quote, Did that help? It, in, down at Lake Ta uh, Lake Eufaula. Yeah. It's affiliated with Scientology. It's with Scientology. Oh my gosh. We didn't know it. Demonic things happen there. Yeah. And she was rescued out of okay, there. Okay, but they're coming out quickly. She was rescued. Yes. Quickly. Yes. This is a quick Holy Ghost work tonight. You're going to be so free you won't even know what to do with this. I'm telling you. Ah, the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. over here from this where I started with you. Your name? Tom. Tom. Nancy. Nancy. Gwen. Gwen. April from Amarillo. April, April from who? Amarillo. Amarillo. That's pretty far away, Amarillo. Who's this gentleman here? Neil. Okay, Neil. Jacqueline. 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 Elizabeth. I know this one right here. Yes. What's going on here, sir? The, the love that God has given me from the beginning wow. be restored, renewed to reach out to the lost in that world with my heart, not with my mouth that I may serve him the rest of my wow. life wow. and be pleasing in his sight wow amazing sir, amazing name Sherry Sherry Alicia. Alicia from? Mississippi. Mississippi. Ella. Ella from? Mississippi. Mississippi. Did I miss anybody? I don't want to miss them. Yes, sir. Jimmy? Yes. From where? Uh, Watson, Oklahoma. Where? Watson, Oklahoma. Watson, Oklahoma. I got you, ma'am, right? Let's all put our hands up for these people here at this altar tonight. Let's pray that they have an invasion of righteousness tonight. Let's pray that what starts tonight here at this altar, that God's gonna get on the inside of these people and rub-a-dub and scrub and cleanse and remove hindering forces, bondages, voices, habits, curses, patterns. They're gonna to break tonight. Under the mighty right hand of God, they're gonna to break tonight. Give them praise. I need some workers up here with me. Come on, some workers. All of you pray this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus. Come on, all of you stand here. Dear Jesus, tonight I renounce every hidden thing, every dark saying. I renounce it before a holy God tonight. And I ask you for grace and empowerment to walk out of who I have been to be who you want me to be. I need to be refocused, refreshed, and recommitted 
to the prize of the high calling. I am so sorry that I've taken this wrong turn, but I'm coming back tonight, never again to stray. And I will cooperate. I will surrender as you did 2,000 years ago on this very day. I give it all to Jesus. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Wow. I need someone right over here, right over here, right over here, right over here. Right over here. Let it go tonight. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go tonight. Let it go. tonight let it go let it go let it go oh my come on let's give God a big big shout tonight oh much the Holy Ghost on you sir pastor where are you at pastor Paul pastor what do you think about this tonight such a glorious night presence of the Lord. Mm. Praise the Lord. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands all over the room. Awesome. See, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Just let him touch you. Hallelujah. Come on, just release that right there, just as we go home tonight. Come on, just offer up thanksgiving. So beautiful. So beautiful. Father, we're so grateful for tonight. We're just so, Father God, grateful. We come to you, Father, with thanksgiving. Not only did you touch us, but you came to make us whole. You said that, Father, they that put their trust in you will never be disappointed. And so tonight, Father God, you give your beloved rest. As we sleep through the night, Father, you continue to work into the hours of tomorrow until we come back again Father tomorrow evening and know that I was glad to go into the house of the Lord and Father we give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory